I really never thought that I would be making so many videos inside in May. It's been unseasonably uh, rainy. Today I was walking around, it was crazy. It was still beautiful, but it's crazy how rainy it is. Uh, anyways, if you're new to the channel, I'm Dave. Uh, I've been answering questions for several years for people who are interested to come over and teach in Japan. So if that sounds like something useful for you, uh, please do consider, you know, hitting that subscribe, hitting the bell notification so you'll be let known as soon as videos go live on the channel. That said, welcome. Nice to meet you. And let's answer the question. This was something uh, I was asked about directly through Instagram today. So usually I'm asked about what's the best company, and I'll answer that time eternal ad infinitum. But that was not this question. That's why I wanted to answer it. It was original. Uh, this question had to do with, it wasn't which company is the best, it was that I have a job offer. And so now that I have that job offer, all of a sudden, I thought everything was settled. I felt fine with the situation. But one of these other companies that I had applied for has now reached out to me as well. And I'm at a loss. I don't want to lose the opportunity with the first place. It was Interact that uh, had offered him a position, but I don't know if I'm going to be missing out. If I ignore this, what should I do? And I think people's kind of knee jerk reaction to this situation is coached by the feeling of not realizing how much power and patience you can potentially have for your position. Uh, and this will answer the question and extend to one other thing that I'll talk about as well. So if you are, if, if you find yourself in this position, because a lot of people will apply to multiple companies to begin with, uh, kind of the rote uh, expected decision that people will make is to apply for Jet, but at that same time, they'll probably apply for some dispatch companies, maybe a few Akaiwas, something like that. So a lot of people will find themselves in this position where somebody says yes, but then all of a sudden they might get a whole bunch of other offers at the same time and they're left wondering what to do. So my advice, my thoughts on this are basically that don't worry that if you accept another job interview that you have somehow endangered the other one that you've been offered. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of reasons why it's good to get a sense and to take on these other job interviews. If you get offered something, don't just ignore everything else. That's kind of like the base level thing that I would say. So if you get this other alternative job offer, you should go and have that interview. Chances are that interview is going to be on Zoom or it's going to be on Skype or something like that, kind of a preliminary thing. And so it's awesome for a couple of reasons. You now know you have like, a, you call it a baseline, a baseline expectation. You know that uh, company A, is going to offer you a salary of this much, and you know if they're going to have benefits, you know the lay of the land for that particular company. And it gives you something now where before you had nothing to contrast your choices against, you have contrast because you don't just kind of have like the, the minimal description because you've had the interview with them, you're getting much more detail out of them. So you know far better what it's going to be like if you actually work for them. So now, uh, company B and then perhaps C afterwards gets a hold of you and say that they want an interview, go and have that interview. Because if you do what you're going to get, I mean, let's say best case scenario, you discover that what you were initially offered from this other company is dog shit. <laughs> and you, you could make way more working for this other company. Not only that, they include benefits and they include better holidays. And so thank the great spaghetti monster in the sky that you actually went to this other interview to find out that you were going to get a better opportunity from them as opposed to just shutting down, freaking out and saying, oh no, I can only go with this one because I don't want to endanger this option. They don't know that you're going to have another interview. So you can get a lay of the land. And then by extension, if you get company C and company D, you do the same thing. You have nothing to lose by taking on any additional interviews and everything to gain. So the other thing that becomes a benefit to you if you do this is even in the case that this company uh, offers you something that's not as good, you're still learning that market. It's kind of like when you go out to rent houses and you don't know what a good deal is on a house until you've seen 20 houses or you've watched the postings for those houses for so long that when a sweet deal comes up, you can differentiate uh, that sweet deal from the rest of the deals that you've been now building up a catalog in your head and you're doing that for the job market that you've now applied for. And 
It will also allow you to understand that once you've been here, that what sort of value should you be squeezing out of any further, further opportunities. So those are my thoughts. Don't sweat it. Don't think that you have to ignore this other option if it comes up. Absolutely not. Quite the opposite. You go to that interview and you gather inf information because knowledge is power, ever and always. The, uh, the one last thing that I wanted to talk about in this video, because this can be concise to kind of make that point about interview everywhere, gather information. Uh, the other thing, this is another question not so popularly answered, but it comes down to the pressure that people will often feel in regards to placement. So a lot of these companies, they're filling up like, uh, you know, wherever they have holes and they'll probably have holes in the least desirable place that they have because nobody wants to work there. <laughs> and again, because people feel this anxiety regarding, oh, I've got the opportunity. It's almost like uh, it's FOMO. It's fear of missing out. You think that this opportunity is this one opportunity that you're going to have. And if you don't immediately take it, then all opportunity is gone forevermore. But it couldn't be farther from the truth. They have that opening, they're gonna need to fill it. But if you push back and say when they're like, do you mind if we position you right next to the uh, Fukushima nuclear reactor? I mean, there's a bonus in it for you because there's the cleanup right outside your window. Well, it's probably not worth that bonus to work next to a nuclear accident. So what you do is if you don't like your placements in just the same way, if they've already said that they're gonna take you on and hire you, then you should feel free to say to them, I'm going to wait for another placement. There's lots of people who end up on like deferred or waiting lists for Jet and every single other company. And whether it's that you were forced into deferment or you that you ask for that waiting for a better placement. I know a lot of people who will find something better and be much happier for it for the fact that they didn't rush in and realize that they don't need to. You can take your time if you're in the middle of nowhere, maybe so more, maybe much more nowhere than you would like to put up with because some people like a little bit of nowhere but not absolute boonies don't be afraid to say to the company you know what that's awesome i really appreciate it but i'm gonna hold off if you guys would consider one more placement for me uh, i am more than happy to wait it'll give you a little bit more time to save a little bit more time to plan usually having a little bit more time to process your visa which is another great thing that you can do and it's only a matter of something opening up and then perhaps you get the absolute ideal position where you gave them preferences where you want to live that you now have access to. So those are my thoughts and I hope that they're helpful for you. I really appreciate you dropping by the channel. Uh, please do drop that like. As I said at the beginning, if you'd like to subscribe for more information like this, you can always get a hold of me. It's DaveTrippinon at gmail.com. Uh, that will end up on the podcast or in a video like this. Uh, as well, please do consider supporting me on Patreon because that is amazing and I greatly appreciate it. It's how I truly grow. But for now, the clock has run out and I will catch you in the next video.